For more than 3,000 years, his blood kept a secret the Sands refused to tell. The boy king who ruled for barely a decade has whispered to generations from within his golden mask. But now, the whisper has become a voice, decoded not from stone or papyrus, but from the strands of his own DNA. The Pharaoh's genome has spoken, and what it reveals is rewriting the story of ancient Egypt. When Howard Carter broke the seal of Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the world gasped. The treasures were dazzling. Chariots, thrones, the unblemished mask of gold. But amid the glitter lay something infinitely more valuable. The body of a child, frozen in time. The boy who once ruled as the living image of a god, now held within him a biological archive a time capsule of royal blood that would survive the centuries. Yet it would take nearly a hundred years for science to open that final chamber, the chamber within his bones. For decades, Tutankhamun's story was told through the eyes of historians and art historians. We knew his father, the heretic King Akhenaten, who defied the gods of Egypt and worshipped a single sun disk, the Aten. We knew the beauty of Nefertiti, whose bust remains one of humanity's greatest works of art. But we did not truly know Tutankhamun himself. Who was he? What did his bloodline carry? Genius, divinity, or a curse? The answers, it turns out, were written in his genome all along. In the early 21st century, technology finally caught up with curiosity. Egyptian and European researchers embarked on one of the most ambitious genetic studies ever attempted on ancient remains. Extracting DNA from mummified tissue is a delicate act of defiance against time itself. Heat, humidity, and ancient embalming chemicals destroy genetic material. But under the sterile lights of a modern laboratory, scientists carefully drilled tiny fragments from Tutankhamun's bones. From those microscopic traces, they began to resurrect the biological signature of a dynasty. At first, it seemed impossible. Contamination was a constant threat. Every breath, every flake of modern skin could corrupt the code. But after months of precision and repetition, the team succeeded. They sequenced enough of Tutankhamun's genome to paint a portrait not of gold, but of flesh and inheritance. What emerged shocked even the experts. Tutankhamun, once imagined as a radiant young ruler, was, in truth, a fragile figure. His DNA revealed genetic disorders, a clubfoot, a cleft palate, and evidence of bone necrosis that likely caused him immense pain. Far from the idealized warrior king depicted in his artifacts, Tutankhamun may have limped through his short life, supported by a staff. In his tomb, archaeologists found more than a hundred walking sticks. Now we know why. His genome told the truth his statues never could. But the question that electrified historians was not his health, but his bloodline. Who were his parents? Ancient inscriptions were silent on the matter erased by political upheaval after his death. The DNA revealed what history had hidden. Tutankhamun was the child of siblings. His father, Akhenaten, had married his own sister, a union meant to preserve divine blood, yet it carried a genetic price. Generations of royal intermarriage had concentrated harmful mutations, producing a lineage both sacred and doomed. In the chromosomes of a single boy lay the cost of Egypt's obsession with purity. Still, the genome offered more than tragedy. It illuminated a web of ancestry stretching beyond the Nile. Tutankhamun's paternal DNA showed affinities with populations in the ancient Near East, the Levant, and even Southern Europe. This did not make him foreign. It reminded us that Egypt far from being isolated, was a crossroads of peoples, ideas, and genes. Caravans moved along trade routes from Mesopotamia 
to the Nile Delta, carrying not only gold and incense, but lineages. The pharaoh's genome became proof of connection, not division. Even more revealing was the discovery that Tutankhamun's family line, the so-called Amarna dynasty, was genetically distinct within Egypt's long history. The DNA from mummies identified as his relatives, including Amenhotep III and Queen Tia, formed a tight cluster of shared markers, confirming a continuous bloodline. This was a dynasty obsessed with transcendence, with reshaping the cosmos itself. Akhenaten's monotheistic revolution, the worship of Aten, may have been inspired by a sense of divine uniqueness that ran in their very veins. The genome, silent for millennia, had become a historian. As scientists compared Tutankhamun's genetic map with other ancient and modern populations, a new vision of Egypt emerged. It was neither purely African nor purely Middle Eastern. It was both and more. A civilization at the heart of the Old World, nourished by the river but connected by the desert. This finding shattered centuries of simplistic assumptions. Egypt was not built by one race, one tribe, or one region. It was a symphony of migrations, Nubian, Levantine, Mediterranean, blended long before the first pyramid rose. The pharaoh's DNA proved what history had always hinted. Identity in the ancient world was fluid, layered, and endlessly complex. Yet every revelation raised another mystery. If the royal bloodline was so fragile, how did the empire endure? If the gods demanded perfection, why did their chosen king carry imperfection in his genes? Perhaps that is the deeper truth of Tutankhamun's genome. It shows us that power and frailty can coexist within the same flesh. The golden mask hid not a god, but a human being, brilliant, broken, and mortal. The story of Tutankhamun's DNA also transformed the science of archaeology itself. It was no longer enough to read inscriptions or date pottery. Now, we could read life directly from the dead. Every bone became a scroll, every tooth a library. Through DNA sequencing, we began to reconstruct entire family trees of ancient people. We could trace migrations, diseases, and diets, even the spread of ideas carried by bloodlines. For Egyptology, this was a revolution more profound than any discovery of gold. But decoding the pharaoh's genome was not without controversy. Some questioned the interpretations. Could modern contamination have altered the data? Were the familial links truly certain? Science, like history, thrives on debate. And as methods improve, new studies continue to refine the picture. Yet one thing is beyond doubt. We have crossed a threshold. The silent dead can now speak in sequences of A, T, C, and G. What they tell us is not just about ancestry. It is about destiny. Tutankhamun's brief reign coincided with one of Egypt's most turbulent eras. After his father's religious revolution collapsed, the boy king's task was to restore balance. He reopened the temples of the old gods, moved the capital back to Thebes, and tried to heal a wounded kingdom. Perhaps his frail body mirrored the fragility of Egypt itself. Magnificent, but vulnerable. His DNA, burdened by the choices of his ancestors, became a metaphor for the empire's own fate. When Tutankhamun died, probably around the age of 19, he left no surviving heirs. His lineage, the divine blood of Akhenaten, ended with him. In the royal tomb, his genome slept for three millennia, the last heartbeat of a god-king preserved in silence, until the needles of science pierced that silence and drew forth his final confession. And what a confession it was! The pharaoh who once ruled the mightiest land on earth was not the image of immortality we imagined. He was human a boy trapped by expectations older than his dynasty. 
His DNA carried both the glory and the curse of his house. Through him, we see how civilizations rise not on perfection, but on persistence. How the pursuit of divine purity can lead to decay, while diversity, the mingling of peoples, breathes life into empires. Today, researchers continue to examine the genomes of mummies across Egypt. Each new sequence adds another note to the music of history. We learn that the ancients traveled farther than we thought, married across borders, shared diseases and dreams. The genetic web of the past mirrors our own, tangled, shared, deeply human. And in that realization lies a quiet humility. The realization that history is not written only by victors, but by molecules. For Tutankhamun, the boy whose name means living image of Amun, immortality came not from the gods, but from science. His face, reconstructed from DNA data, stares back at us across time. Young, delicate, unmistakably human. We can almost imagine him breathing again, unaware that his blood would one day expose the hidden architecture of a civilization. The genome has become his final monument, invisible yet indestructible. So what does the Pharaoh's hidden genome truly reveal? That the past is never dead. It sleeps beneath the skin, waiting for someone brave enough to decode it. That the gods we worshipped were reflections of ourselves, fragile, flawed, extraordinary, and that every secret buried in the sand will, eventually, find its way back to the light. Perhaps somewhere in the Valley of the Kings, other tombs still hold untold codes of royal blood. Perhaps within them lies another voice, another truth that will rewrite what we think we know. Because history, like DNA, mutates with every discovery. And the story of Tutankhamun, the boy who became a god, the god who became a man, the man who became data, is far from over. For more than 3,000 years, the desert has guarded his silence. Now the silence has broken. The Pharaoh's genome has spoken. And in its whisper, we hear the pulse of eternity. If you enjoyed uncovering the secrets of ancient Egypt, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more stories buried beneath the sands of time.